will be weighing heavily on you by now, I'm sure. Uh, so today I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of responsive design. I'm going to talk a bit about the context, how it came to be, um, and to tell you a little bit about how to implement responsive stuff in your own designs. So uh, most of the talk is about theme design, but we'll touch on about WordPress aspects as well. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so what do we mean by responsive design? Where, where does it come from? Um, Nice yellow slide, this is the waking you up <laughs> uh, Responsive design as a term was coined by this gentleman, Ethan Marcotte. Uh, he um, wrote a very good blog post for the uh, web design blog, A List of a couple of years ago, talking about responsive design. And the idea behind, the basic idea behind responsive design is these days we'll have things like this. We have smartphones, we can browse the web on a variety of different devices. And the tablets are coming on. We, when we make websites, we have to think about different devices, different contexts that people might be looking at these things uh, on and in and around. So um, Ethan wrote this, this great article about responsive design. This is the cover of the book that kind of was spun out of the article, which is very good, I highly recommend it to you. Um, and uh, he kind of, it, it's kind of a manifesto. It's uh, all about how do you uh, take one set of content, ideally, and display it on a variety of different devices and screens and contexts. Um, now, uh, responsive, you, uh, who here has, uh, has heard of the term responsive design before today? Most people. How many people have tried building responsive stuff? Great, okay. Um, there's another thing that's doing great. Adaptive. <coughs> now, um, you may have heard this other word. They're, they're quite similar in concepts. Um, adaptive is kind of like responsive design light, if you like. The idea behind responsive design is that it's very... Uh, it, it's total, totally responsive design. It's fluid, it fills the viewpoints, the content all moves around all the time. It's defined in terms of uh, percentages and uh, EM, logical screen units, so it's all proportional. Um, it's uh, less predictable because it all flows the whole time, but it's more compatible. You can put it on any device and it will fill that viewport ideally. Now that, that's kind of, you know, it's continuum. So it's not like this responsive design, adaptive design, it's necessarily one side or the other. They're, they each borrow elements from each other. And I wouldn't worry too much about the semantics, but essentially adaptive design is instead of where you have content flowing to fill a whole screen, you kind of say, well, we're going to make something about this wide, and then we're going to stretch the margins until we get something bigger, and then it's going to be this wide, stretch the margins again until we get something bigger, and this one, and so forth. And so you have like these nice defined blocks of content that fill your space, and you can think in pixels still, and it's more predictable, but it's perhaps a bit less compatible, and I'll come back to it. Um, so, a couple of examples then. Here we go. Uh, this is something, Robots or Not. Um, if you buy Ethan Marcotte's book, this is his example. This uh, is the site that he shows you how to build. So, because we're on a projector, we're already missing probably some of the richness of the design. We're already quite far down in terms of the width. But if I can just about see the corner there and grab it, you'll see the content starts moving and then changes as the window gets smaller. Uh, and draw your attention to a couple of other things. The logo starts off on the left, and it pops up at the top, and so forth. And everything just changes with the size of the window. So it's all completely proportional. Uh, second example uh, of responsive design here. Uh, I've picked the, oh, again. Sorry. That was uh, cached before, and I didn't go away. Boston Globe. So they redesigned recently, very high profile, and uh, again, it's all, all completely responsive. It shrinks and goes down to one column as you move it. And if you have a really, really big screen, it increases the number of columns. So it's just like a newspaper, um, but they just add more columns to get rid of it. And uh, there's a lot of thinking that's gone into that, so it's quite a good design. Um, this is one I did. This is an ebook search site. Um, now, this is very loosely responsive, but as you change it, it gets narrower and narrower, and when it when steps into mobile, you lose the images, and it shrinks right down to the um, A couple of examples of adaptive design. Um, this was, a, again, an early example with Dick Brands, Simon Collison. Uh, this looks like it should be working in his already. Yeah. Um, let's just try refreshing that So again, okay, that one's a poor example. 
Yeah, if only had like seeing about twice the width, it'd be much more interesting. Because this thing got all sorry? Uh, I could try that. I'm not sure. Let's try that. <laughs> nice try, nice try. Okay, let's try this. Food sets. So this is another um, design that's done around recently. And again, we have steps. Right? Just adjusts in steps rather than completely full of these all design steps. So yeah, a couple of examples there for you. Um, <coughs> but, 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 it's not about the screen size. Um, it's very important, you know, we, we've got screen sizes, you know, biggest screen size these days, 2,500 pixels. Uh, you know, iPhone portrait, 320 pixels. Some people are still browsing the web on the Nokia series 40 phones, you've got like 160 pixels wide there. Um, but screen size is important, but more important thing is the context of these interactions. Um, it's, you know, responsive design, the idea behind it is that you try and serve the same content to all the devices, you try to make it look good. Uh, but let's take a couple of examples. So if you are a coffee shop, for example, um, if somebody comes to your website on a mobile device, chances are they want to know when you're open. Maybe they want to know when you use. And that's something that you can pretty reliably guess that they want to see every time. If you're a cinema, when somebody comes to the website on your mobile, they don't want to know, yeah, they want to know your opening time. So the other thing they really want to know is what's on today. So that's going to be dynamic content. And they might want to book through their mobile as well. So um, that would probably be a completely different interface to the desktop sets. So it's not responsive, it's about picking what is appropriate for the context that the people uh, visiting your sites uh, are interested in. However, um, you can't second guess this. You have to go out and you have to talk to the people who are using the sites. You have to understand what it is they want, what it is they like to do with your site when they're out about with the mobile, when they're sitting on the sofa with a tablet, when they're at their desk at work browsing on a lovely big night, as you may have a generous employer. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is um, what Responsive does do for you uh, is it, uh, I don't if, if, who's looked at a WordPress.com site on an iPhone? Yeah, and you get this uh, little WP Touch plugin giving you a, a, a very generic looking but very well mobile format. So, what Responsive Design is gives you the option of you know, keeping your own branding and whatever else uh, at small screen sizes. Likewise, I, I, I uh, if you look at a lot of WordPress.com iPad sites, uh, sorry, sites on an iPad, you get the onswipe theme, which I love. It uh, tries to let you kind of page uh, by dragging your finger across the page. And if anyone has actually put any investment whatsoever into design, I think it's completely lost. It has no character of its own. It's purely an interface. Um, so by thinking about responsive design, you can keep uh, the character of your site over all those different screen sizes as well. So, how do we go about making sites responsive or adaptive? Um, media call. Uh, this is a media group. This is a very simple media group. Media group group. Um, but uh, back in the battle days of CSS2, uh, I know, uh, they introduced these switches so that when you, when you pulled in a style sheet to your page, you could decide what media that style sheet was for. Um, so the, the obvious one was screen. All was a uh, media all was very common as well because people didn't want to write different style sheets for different things. You had media for print, you had media for braille readers, you had media for TV, uh, and interestingly, you also had media for handheld. So the idea was back in the days of CSS2, before we had things like this, uh, media handheld was if you were browsing something on a phone or something like that, or a palm or whatever it happened to be, uh, media handheld was what um, the browser, what, what the site expected the browser to tell. Unfortunately, um, the handheld manufacturers didn't like this very much. They kind of said, no, we're going to do that. We're going to pretend we're real browsers. We'll just say we are screen media because it's still a screen handheld device. So uh, that became a very unreliable method of detecting whether or not you are, uh, your site is being viewed on a mobile device. So these days we have uh, some new secret source. Um, these are CSS3 media groups. And you can see uh, <coughs> we've got media, we've got screen, and then we've got the club stuff. You can, your, the browsers will now report back to the, uh, sorry, Browsers and the website interact together, so if the browser knows how big it is, it knows how big the device it is that it's on. Uh, and in this case, it said, well, if the browser is at least 479 pixels wide, and it's, uh, the device orientation is landscape, now this is not something that's not supported on all devices, um, but that could be, for example, an iPad in landscape mode. So I know it's wider than 479 pixels, but it, could be, it could be an iPhone in landscape mode as well, that's 480 pixels. Um, but you can do a lot of different things with this. 
Um, yeah, but you can see it's, it's basically like an if-then statement in programming. If this is the case, then these CSS statements will apply. And you can stack these. You can have a lot of if-then-else, if-then-else, if-then-else. Um, media queries are generally quite well supported, but they're not that well supported. Um, the best way to implement media queries is with these things in mind. Um, the simplest media query is no media query at all. So if you're if somebody's on an old browser, if they're on Internet Explorer 5 core disk, or Internet Explorer 6 even, or if they're on an old browser on a mobile phone, it won't support media queries. So you have to assume that that person wants the simplest possible version of your site. Uh, the idea then is you make the site better depending on the capabilities of the browser that is using it. So that can be adding fancy CSS, it can be adding JavaScript as well. So um, your default should be sensible, essentially. Now, um, you can retroactively get responsiveness into Internet Explorer. There's a JavaScript that would let you do it. Um, CSS is not algorithmic, but JavaScript is. JavaScript can turn one thing into another. Um, so I've got a, a little example of this here again. Actually, we're on this screen. But uh, let's just drag it across. So this is um, an example of what a site might look like. Um, this, this, this would be a very, very simple example. So you've got like a, a search box, and then you've got like a, a series of list items that represent a menu. Now, so that's not very mobile friendly. So if you were going to deal with this with CSS in a very basic and easy way, you might say, hey, let's make it more touchable. But yeah, it still doesn't really solve your problem. You've still got a long way to scroll before you get to the exciting content. <laughs> um, so uh, with a bit of JavaScript, you can. Uh, Sorry, I've lost my cursor between screens. You can do something different. You can say, well, we don't want list items to menu. We want something like this, a nice drop down menu that when people select something, they can go to a different page. And all of a sudden, it's much friendlier because it's taking much less space. But you have to have a device that lets you do that. OK. So, um, Media queries are, are kind of the first way of, of doing things. Um, but there's, there's other little bits and pieces that kind of come together with it as well. So uh, when you're thinking about responsive designs, here's another uh, useful thing. Floods. Um, floods are wonderful because uh, if you've just got a whole bunch of text, it will flow to the right size. If you've got block elements, um, now I hope everyone's reasonably comfortable with floats. If you're not, then you've got a long road ahead of you, sorry. Um, <laughs> But floats are really good. So uh, in the example I just showed you, the search box was floated right and the navigation was floated less, which means that the search box stays where it is or the navigation is um, So if you build your layouts with floats in mind um, and you think about the structure of the page, as you change the size, things will flow differently. Um, and I'll come back to that as well. Um, another key thing you need to understand about uh, responsive design, uh, the viewports. This is all Apple's fault, but it's, it's not that bad. Um, when Apple, you, you, if you've ever used an iPhone or most smartphones, when you go to a website that hasn't been uh, optimized for a mobile experience, it will zoom right out. You'll see the whole website in that tiny little browser window. Uh, that's because Apple did a bit of a hack when they used the uh, iPhone. They said, we're going to make this thing called Viewport, and we're going to make it 978 pixels wide, so that the websites think they're actually on a 978 pixel wide browser, and therefore it will all fit in. Um, when we're doing responsive design, we don't want that. We actually want the pixels to be the size they are. So this is a way of getting around that. You need a meta tag called viewport, and you say, let's make the width of this viewport equal to the width of the device. Um, and so the website then thinks, oh, I'm on a 320 pixel wide screen. And you can start designing at the pixel level on the device. Um, there are some bugs around content zoom. Uh, which are outside the scope of this talk. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can go and look that up if you like. Um, and you know, beyond these kind of simple ways, uh, you know, the, 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 these are just the very basic building blocks of responsive design. If you want to learn more about how to do responsive design, my advice to you is this. Go out and look at people who have built CSS frameworks. There are a lot of CSS frameworks out there that give you all this stuff kind of built in. So they have um, a grid system built in, and they can see, well, OK, if, if it's this way, then we've got three, three blocks of the grid. If it's this way, we've got six blocks of the grid, and so on. They will also include things like um, preset content sizes. 
they will include <coughs> these, like helper scripts. So they'll include this respond.js in, in a lot of cases. They will include uh, other scripts that help you have CSS3 backwards compatibility with other browsers. Uh, this is how I learned about responsive design. I played it with myself, then I went, I'm going to look at these frameworks. And I kind of looked at but, 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 going back to what I was saying before, um, it's no substitute for understanding the context, and it's no substitute for understanding these dual principles of mobile first, designing very, very simply so that even the simplest mobile device can visit, and progressive enhancement, adding on new stuff to support better browsers as you go. So, what about WordPress? I'm going to time. Um, this might be a typical WordPress site. Um, missing the ubiquitous jQuery contents later, I'm afraid. But, uh, <laughs> but these are the kind of elements we need to consider when we're thinking about uh, a responsive design. You know, so the question is, when you squish this down, what order does it fall into? Does the logo come at the top? Does the navigation come at the top? What happens to the sidebar? Is it two sidebars? Does one go up? Does one go down? What about the widgets? The, is the content in the widgets uh, the right size, the right shape for all the different screen sizes. So the people who make the plugins that you're using think about responsive design. What do they say? Well, every time you implement this, it's going to be 300 pixels wide and tough, basically. Uh, images. Images are a lovely one as well. Um, so, uh, and the other thing you can do, of course, when I say about uh, JavaScript, jQuery, Alchemy, you don't have to load all this at the same time. This is a progressive enhancement thing. If you've got a jQuery slider, you can dynamically load that with jQuery rather than serving it off to all devices. So when you go for mobile, it's not even there in the markup. That likens the load for these mobile devices. You can load higher quality images later. Um, so yeah, things like navigation as well. Uh, we have that quick HTML example I showed you. Uh, when you think about navigation, it has to be on small devices, finger navigable. Um, now, Apple's guideline is uh, a minimum of 44 pixels square for a finger tap. Now, that's quite big on a small screen. Um, if you translate that through DPI, that's about 18 millimeters square. So that's the kind of size you should be thinking about in terms of, is it easy to interact with? Um, images. Here's a great hack for images. <coughs> if your image is inline, if the uh, container it's in narrows, the image will narrow with it. Uh, now, this doesn't always mean the image will scale attractively, but it won't break boxes, which is the main thing. And if you really, really care about your images looking good, then you're just going to have to make them specific sizes and dynamically load them for higher resolutions as the browser gets better. Um, the key one, plugins and widgets. Uh, as I was saying before, you have to test these, test these, test these on all the devices that you might want this to happen on. Because just because you, when you resize your browser window down, it works, it doesn't mean it's actually going to work on the device that you think it should work on. So if you've got a good range of devices to test on, that can save your bacon as well. Um, that's about all I have to say about responsive design in terms of this overview. Uh, a little bit of further reading for you there. These are my hot stuff, um, the mobile first kind of idea from Google Boost View. Um, Yibu are uh, an Edinburgh based mobile, well, some of them are Edinburgh based mobile design company. This presentation is an excellent, excellent case study about pragmatic responsive design. They, uh, because they're mobile focused, they talk about supporting really small phone screens and how you can kind of come up from that. So, uh, Peter Paul Koch, if you haven't come across him, he's excellent on the subject of um, CSS implementation differences in browsers and massive mobile page. And then finally, again, uh, if you want to learn more about how to implement things, check out media queries because uh, there are lots and lots and lots of different sites out there that use media queries and you can pull them apart and see what you're doing. So, questions, comments? Yes? Does the viewport tag validate in the HTML spot? Uh, it's a meta tag, so yes, it does. Okay, just because the new HTML5 spec that Google is using <coughs> now wants you to validate all the meta tags, it won't just validate really? it like. That one it, validates. That one does validate. Yeah. Do Google. the Apple or other Apple hacks validate? Uh, not, not all, all of them, but the, the Google used the viewport mm -hmm. stuff as well. So awesome. it, it's because Apple was first with the other <coughs> uh, used device makers who kind of went with so, uh, Yes. What will happen when the resolution is then small devices? Um, well, uh, we've kind of passed that point already. Um, when Apple introduced the iPhone 4, they decided to make the, the pixels logical pixels. So each pixel on the iPhone 4 is actually a quarter of a pixel. 
Um, so they're trying to keep what you think the screen size should be rather than pixel touch out. But then uh, you can, there's another media, media query where you can say, well, if the device resolution supports it, you can serve it at that quality images. And things like that. So yeah, it's, there's a whole other thing you need to think about there. Um, but I think it's still going to be a few years before we have to worry too much. Yep. Uh, then just what CSS framework do you recommend? What do you use? Uh, I've been using um, Journey Corpy's less framework recently, but he's now saying um, don't use that, use this new one I've come up with. Um, <laughs> yeah, I swear, he comes up with one, one every fortnight. Um, and he's, he, he's, he's a machine. If you don't know Journey Corpy, check out his site. He's got lots and lots of framework stuff. Uh, he tweets quite a lot about it and he uh, really thinks hard about these things and, and uh, talks about the challenges. Yeah. So it's Golden Grape now is the one he's uh, No, that's on. the old one. He's now got a new one. That one came out about a long time ago. Golden Grid is an interesting one. Uh, Golden Grid is a responsive framework, but yeah. it's come up with a new adaptive framework, which where the idea is you take your grid columns and you center them, and then you just add columns as the browser gets wider. Uh, so there isn't actually much to that one. It's more on like an idea that's got not much of an implementation, but it's still quite neat. I've been trying that for one client site, but I'm not quite there yet. Really, so. Yeah. What, um, so media queries are, are applied. Um, let me get this right. Is that applied in the, in the browser? Because because there's there's media queries you know handling that in the CSF, but there's also analyzing the, the user agent and, and serving different media based on based on that. So what is uh, yeah, no media, media queries are something the browser deals with itself. Yeah. So, so, so it, you've, it's, so it's you've, all on so you've already supplied your high res image. Um, do you actually want to display the small? Yes, so, yes. Yeah. So that's the idea. Is if you can avoid sending a mobile, if you just send the bare minimum to start with, and then you just progressive enhance and stuff. So dynamically, they load stuff with jQuery and Ajax if you can. Uh, or, yeah. 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 But there, yeah, that, that's that's one of these things where things are still being worked out. Yeah. And there isn't really a good way I don't judge. Yes. Um, so in terms of the mobile first idea, you said that. Um, we should put the CSS for the mobile first because that's the most broken down basic version and then build on it progressively. Yes. Grant, so if older browsers such as, well, okay, IE6, it's still got a huge percentage of Scotland thanks to banks and government and IE7 as well. If they don't understand CSS queries, does that mean if, if I responsive design and build mobile first, then actually anyone who goes on an IE6 or IE7 is going to see the mobile site? They won't see the mobile site, they'll just see the simplified version of content. Because it's not a mobile site per se, it's just simple content. Sure. It's not very pretty, um, but that's not a bad compromise because I is. Well, it's a bad compromise if you're on I six and seven. It's yes, not a bad but, compromise um, if, if you if you know you're going to have to. But that, that's where this other thing um, I mentioned there's this respond.js which it enables responsive design in Internet Explorer, so you can use that if it's really crucial. Um, but for most of us who are hopefully making public facing sites, there's going to be fewer IE users. I hope. Yes. The other ways that you can use an IE conditional comment and add in a bunch of the other style sheets. Sure, and I got that bit, but if, if you're doing additional IE style sheets, you know... But they're not, they're, they're the same style sheets. But instead of serving them based on the width, you just serve them to IE6 up yeah, to like... Yeah, because you, you, you can do these media queries, you can do the media queries within style sheets with the at media uh, syntax, or you can just list a bunch of style sheets and then have the media queries in the media equals... In but like, like it says, if you've got conditional comments, you can just do it once with the media query, once for me. Okay. Uh, just one thing, going back to your idea of context, um, one thing that people that's worth be considering uh, if they are building sites and, and getting to the situation where the sites are being used mobile uh, and they want to understand uh, <coughs> how people are using the sites on mobile devices is that if you get really sophisticated with Google Analytics, you can uh, look at uh, you know people on certain devices what pages are visiting absolutely in those pages and, and then you can start actually adapting the way your site behaves to give them that. So the the uh, site I was talking about earlier, the uh, uh, disabled menu site, that's a classic example. But as you mentioned, if you're on your mobile device, you want to know what's on today, and if you can build in the, the geo. And, and that, that's a classic example. Well, I, I think I was talking more from the point of it's a new site. You don't have any. You've got to go and talk to people. If it's an existing site, absolutely, you can use your, your data to work out all of that stuff. Yeah. I think what Lynn said about using analytics is a good point because you're, what you said about context, it's not. You're making a, a huge assumption, and, and it's very easy to do that. 
like for a long time went right okay you're on a mobile you're in the street looking for a business but that's not really true no like, sorry, a lot I mean, of the time that, I, I meant to, I, I, maybe I, I didn't make this very clear but I'm saying in my example you've got the coffee shop in the cinema and that's just an example that is not necessarily borne out by when you go and talk to the people that are using the sites um, so you've got to do both sides you've got to have a think about what might it be but actually you, you need to know by talking to people 